Good afternoon. My name is Ruth Pratt, and I'm a member of the Board of the Council, and I'm delighted to welcome you here today to our meeting with Prime Minister Matteo Renzi. I'd also like to welcome the CFR members around the nation and around the world participating in this meeting through the live stream. Prime Minister Renzi is, I think we all know, swept into office this year with a clear mandate for change. As the youngest Prime Minister in Italy's history, he's inspired many with his commitment to drive significant structural change. As he once said, we want to restart Italy. We want Italy, which has an extraordinary, dizzying, astonishing past, to have a future also. Or in darker terms, he said he wants to ensure that Italy, and I quote him here, exits the swamp by aggressively attacking structural elements that hinder growth and job creation, earning him the name El Rotomatore, the scrapper, as in scrapping the old. His audacious agenda spans everything from shrinking an oversized, splintered parliament to streamlining decision making to reforming everything from labor rules and the judiciary system to education. The Prime Minister represents youth, ambition, and energy in Italian politics like no one has in decades, and not just because he is 39 years old. And sir, you barely missed the age cutoff for the term program for youth, which would get you a discount on your membership. His leadership team similarly reflects his commitment to changing the status quo, with very admirably half of them women, and with an average age for the team of 48. He keeps in touch with his constituents via Twitter and has one and a half million followers. But he is obviously inheriting a decades-long problem that is challenging to reverse, and that is the topic for today. The Italian economy is stagnating and is likely to stay in recession for the third year in a row, with growth not expected until 2015, and less than 1% at that. Government debt is expected to hit around 136% of GDP in 2014, second only to Greece, and unemployment is at a painful 13% and 43% among youth. The naysayers are beginning to say that the Prime Minister's government is not moving quickly enough, but he has been very clear about the set of changes that is needed and has demonstrated a willingness to challenge convention while building the consensus needed for change, consistent with his view that the world should be viewed in terms of new and old rather than left and right. So we look forward to our conversation. We look forward to your opening comments. And then we'll um, have some time for conversation and open it up to everyone here. Thank you very much for joining us. Signor Primo Ministro, benvenuto. Everybody, I'm, I'm uh, really honored to be here. And uh, thank you so much, Ruth, for your kind expressions. Consensus for change, absolutely correct. This this uh, message, I think I must copy this uh, this statement uh, for my for my next uh, speech in Italy, because the risk is a consensus for consensus, consensus for stay exactly in the same condition of the past. And this is the most incredible risk for my country. My country is an incredible country. Uh, I've, we love Italy. I think you love Italy. Everybody loves Italy. It's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. Yes, but this is the asset and this is the risk for my country. Because uh, I don't know if we love Italy for the past, for the present, or for the future. Surely for the past. The past is uh, amazing, gorgeous. Uh, art, culture, masterpieces, uh, uh, Roman Empire, and uh, Renaissance. For me, I was Mayor Florence. Renaissance is a little better than Empire Roma, but it's not ranking. It's not important. But the past surely is a great, great, great uh, asset for Italy. Also, a past uh, uh, focused on the um, high technology. Uh, also for the sad pages of the past. For example, this is a mobile, you know, but the first uh, telephone wasn't American telephone. Now is the Apple, and we, we can discuss about uh, uh, how many American is Apple. 
not the piece, but the idea and the quality of product is clearly American. The first telephone wasn't an American telephone, wasn't a Bell telephone. Also, United States Congress in 2002, I think, recognized the first telephone was an Italian telephone. It was created by Antonio Meucci. Antonio Meucci uh, worked uh, in the theater of uh, La Pergola in Florence, and uh, he decided to invent this instrument. But he lost. He lost the opportunity to have the copyright for the lack of money. It's a sad history. But maybe it could be also a possibility for the future in Italy. We have good ideas and we are not able to realize. Why? Because we love our present. Despite the situation of economic uh, um, results uh, or the number of an employers uh, and uh, other uh, um, results, uh, for example, of uh, GDP. We love our, uh, our present because the present is a present of quality of life, our, uh, good experiences uh, in um, uh, every field, in, uh, food, uh, uh, holiday, wine, obviously cars, uh, uh, Sergio Marchione here, so not only uh, food, wine, but the challenge for my government is love our future. I'm jealous of our future. I think the most important experience for Italy will be tomorrow, not yesterday. This is a very ambitious program. Maybe somebody could think uh, the new prime minister in Italy is officially crazy. I know, this, this could be a reaction. But this is the program of our government change ourselves to come back to be Italy. Come back to be Italy means a few things. First of all, change a political way in Europe, but after change ourselves in the traditional problems of our country. Maybe you met in the last time uh, other prime ministers here. And I think everybody spoke about the necessity of change of public administration, reduction of taxation, change of election, electoral law and institutional system, um, labor market system, and civil justice. I can continue for two days with the list of problems. The difference, we are not interested in the list of problems. We must absolutely commit to, to try a solution at this is the reason for the which, for the first time, after 1959, a party in Italy obtained 41% uh, of votes in the election. It's the first time after 57 years, 56 years. And our party is the party most with the incredible result in Europe, most voted in Europe, more than uh, Angela Merkel's party. This obviously for Italian is a very important uh, reason of pride, <laughs> more or less in the, in the soccer, soccer uh, match. Also, if uh, after this world champion, we don't discuss about um, soccer. We love very much the baseball, uh, the <laughs> cricket and not. So what is the core of our government? And uh, then I think we can uh, uh, begin with a question and uh, answer. I think the first thing is change labor market in Italy. Because labor market in Italy is uh, focused on the past. In the last five years, Italy lost uh, more or less five points in the ranking of unemployment uh, uh, results. Now we are 12.6 not 13, 20, 0.4 is very important, but obviously it's a joke, but the question is serious. means a lot of people without perspective, without future. And oh, we are not a revolution in Italy, despite the um, average of unemployment, because there is a welfare state focused on families, with maybe unbelievable for American people and also for Italian people who live in America. But it's the only reason to save in this moment 
uh, the, 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 the climate in the, in the families and in the life in the cities. First of all, labor market. Very clear. We think it's important to reduce the number of problems for entrepreneurs. Now, to choose a man to work in a big company as a Fiat Chrysler or in a little, uh, little uh, um, team of two people who work in um, artisan products in a historical city, the first problem is fight against public state and public administration. So reduce the number of problems by the state. Give freedom. Give simply the possibility to try. And also give the message. The lost belong in an experience of uh, um, life. Because in Italy, usually, if you lost, if you fail out, you are finished. I'm really surprised uh, the last time in which I visited the Silicon Valley and uh, uh, East Coast uh, in uh, Boston and the University of Boston when the startuppers explain me here if you have the possibility to uh, come back after a failure you are more strong, you are stronger. The venture capitalists believe in me because in the past uh, I understood the reason of my mistakes and now I can try again, try again. This is a possibility usually stopped in Italy. So change labor market, but change the mentality. In Latin, express, Latin expression, change for momentis. First of all, labor market. Second, civil justice. Justice is absolutely, in the last 20 years, Everybody spoke about justice in Italy for the problem uh, of trials, uh, you know, for the uh, traditional problem uh, published uh, in a newspaper of around the world. But the real uh, vision for a new country is not discussed only about the problem of the past. It's explained very quickly and very simply. The timeline for a civil, uh, civil justice uh, must be uh, different. Now, UK, USA, France and Germany have the first step of civil justice in one year. In Italy, 90, 43 days. Almost three years. We must absolutely reduce the time. Give to entrepreneur, to investor, the possibility to have uh, one year the conclusion of process. So, first of all, labor market. Second, civil justice. Third, a big cut of uh, politicians. I'm not against politics. <laughs> I think we must change politicians. This is the reason also of radical change in our government. This is an important difference. I'm not a mm, supporter of uh, demagogic attack to politics. I think politics is a great opportunity for a man and a woman. I believe in the dreams of politics. I believe politics could save a country. I believe politics is important because not only economy change the world. So I believe in politics. But I think exactly because I believe in politics, we must reduce the power of politicians. In Italy, there are in this moment 1,000 of members of parliament. I'm not because I was mayor and it's very strange my history. I'm not a member of parliament, but this is not important, obviously. 1,000 members of parliament. So, United States are not important as Italy, eh? it's clear, but there are the half of members of parliament. You don't understand the importance of to be a member of parliament in Italy. It's not as the United States, a uh, little country, the United States, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but reduce the power, the number, and the procedure of uh, political institutions is our priority. And we began with the first reform. Fourth and uh, five, very, very quickly. Fourth, a fight against corruption. Nobody. In uh, international newspaper, said this uh, little news. 
with the, in the last three governments proposed um, authority anti-corruption. Okay, good propose, but nobody realized that. We sign the decree, we choose a, a judge who come from Naples and who fought against Camorra, very great man, Raffaele Cantone, and we decided to invest in this authority, national, national authority against corruption. Now this is the great partner of public administration in few fields. For example, after two polemics um, focused on Expo 2015 in Milan, the presence of authority national against corruption and the presence of Judge Cantone solved every problem and now we will uh, work for an incredible expo in 2015 in Milan, very based on the uh, quality of food, wine, but in general of sustainability around the world. Fifth uh, Prime Minister, not from New York City, sorry, not from Washington DC, not from Boston, not from uh, Chicago, uh, Detroit uh, Friday, uh, not, I decided to start from Silicon Valley. Please don't translate Valle del Silicio. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think uh, very important uh, this message because with the revolution of information communication technology, we can absolutely change the public administration. This mobile is not the instrument uh, while I'm in online why we wait for the sprint of certificato uh, and I use it for SMS. This is the instrument of revolution of public administration in Italy. With the cloud of the public administration, with the cloud from which we can use everything, every uh, document, every uh, relation with the public administration and uh, start from certificato to arrive to uh, public administration really focused on the future. So uh, I believe it's important for Italy build an idea, uh, an idea of uh, um, public administration able to give the message the future is Italian. The future is not only American, Chinese, uh, but uh, for you it's impossible. Italy, it's the country of the present, it's the country of the past. No, for me no. My challenge is change this, uh, this uh, vision, this approach. This means uh, a radical revolution, not a simply evolution in the formamentis and in mentality of uh, politicians in Italy. This means an incredible revolution and not a simple evolution, also in the storytelling of Italy, in the storytelling of Italy, but this means also an incredible uh, challenge uh, with the citizen. When I met the young uh, startups and the young scientists in Silicon Valley, my speech was that I don't ask you come back. For me, it's not important you come back. You are citizen of the world. It's the traditional system of uh, Italian mentality. Ah, there are the people who are outside of USA. Okay, you stay in USA, good but create value for our country, create opportunity for everything around the world. The Italian success in the past is not simply to stay on the border to defend themselves, but we give the possibility to end up around the world. This is the meaning of Leonardo da Vinci, of Michelangelo. Obviously, speaking about Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, in the moment in which we have the problem with the Maastricht vehicles, it could be strange. But our dream is exactly that. Uh, fight in our country to change and to give the message of revolution for the politicians and for the uh, public employers, but in the same time give this message of hope around the world because if Italy become again Italy, this is important for my country, but I think this is absolutely important also for the United States and our relation. Thank you so much.
Grazie, Angela. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opening comments. We obviously have a lot of ground to cover. I think what's going to be very important is to go into detail on these elements of reform and get specific because the question right. is go. how do we end up implementing them. But before we start there, the opening problem is austerity versus growth and a different point of view about austerity versus growth. And you've been very clear. You've said the idea of an austerity without reforms and without growth is dangerous. To get out of this phase with just austerity is wrong. The problem is you're at odds with Germany on this point and they do hold the cards. So how, Mr. Prime Minister, do you intend to move Germany to give yourself time to implement what we're about to speak about next, the various reforms? Um, I think austerity is an incredible mistake of Europe. But for me, it's impossible to explain a very quickly this position without a radical revolution in Italy. Let me be very frank. In the derby between austerity and growth, Italy stay on the side of growth because it's the only way to exit from this crisis. United States explain us that investing in growth, the economy recovery very, I don't know if very quickly, but for European uh, uh, parameters very quickly. When I go to Brussels to discuss about it, Brussels is obviously the capital of Europe and the kingdom of technocrats. Technocrats. People who doesn't uh, see a, a vision. See only the uh, slide. Okay. I focus on the slide. I must present myself with a revolution in Italy. And then I will able to try to change this bottle because the reaction is okay the usual Italian who explain uh, we must invest in austerity and continue with the public debt but for me it's impossible to understand that Italian public debt is very high but the Italian private uh, um, riches is absolutely higher than other countries of Europe if I'm not able to change administ public administration, bureaucracy, and uh, labor market, and the civil justice in Italy, I'm not able to invest in this bottle. And so mm, it's, uh, I stay on the growth side, but I wait for, I give example. If I'm not able to give example, I'm not believable in Europe. So let's move to the examples, because we would agree the West has an incredible affinity for Italy. In the US, our love for Italy is very deep, but there is a high cynicism about the ability to make that kind of change. So let's start with one of your core points, which is uh, the job market, labor reform, and the Jobs Act, which is clearly a cornerstone of, of your agenda. And you've described the labor rules as comparable to apartheid. That's your word, um, given the sizable protection for insiders versus young workers, and therefore very much needs to change. And when you look at what's happened with the cost of labor in Italy, which has been increasing while unemployment is increasing, that contrasts with many of your neighbors. And clearly there's a lot of focus on Article 18 of the 1970 Labor Act, which limits flexibility and is the, uh, made, seems to be the major lightning rod. So how, what can we expect to see in terms of the Jobs Act uh, what kind of reform and how soon will we start to see the benefit of that change? Uh, it's not easy to explain very with a uh, few well, words. with a tough one. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the last 44 years uh, of polemics in labor market in Italy. Uh, 1970, an incredible, very important uh, law called the Statuto dei Lavoratori changed the history of labor market in Italy. Now, the people of radical left believe the only way for us is maintain this law. Uh, 44 years ago, there are a different word, obviously. <laughs> Absolutely different. But few people believe that if we defend the Statuto del Laboratori, we are really men and women of left. The battle is on the left. I'm uh, the, the, the leader of the Democrat Party in Italy not the leader of a Republican Party. So is in my side of a, of a party. And the battle is exactly in this direction. Change very concretely means avoid the possibility for the judge to decide if the people change jobs or not. 
because in these moments it's not the entrepreneur in Italy only in the companies uh, we, with a number of employers uh, more than 15 and explain the labor market is difficult so uh, give now is the judge who decide if the, 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 the fire is correct or not we must change this approach we must give it simplicity to entrepreneur okay this is the law clear very simply and in the same time to give uh, safety to uh, the, the worker to give the possibility to invest in education in training i offer you a possibility of training not as in united states more 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 sure than the united states but you must accept a job after the course of the, after the training so give simplicity to entrepreneur give safety to worker this is the the, the, the change but uh, this is possible only if we reduce the number of laws about labor market one question not for you but for our, our distinguished guest how many law in Italy uh, spoke about speaking about labor market for you Marchione doesn't it's impossible to answer Marchione Marchione no how many law the answer is impossible 2100 2100 we reduce 40 45 give simplicity this is my goal and we have uh, in this moment in Parliament this, this discussion uh, I'm very optimistic because uh, my party the left party decide to invest in the future and not to defend the past and so this change uh, is uh, absolutely in uh, your hands so staying with the theme of the judicial system, the legal system, and problems, the other manifestation of that is foreign direct investment in Italy, which is about half the level of the EU. It's about a third of the level of the UK. And there are a lot of reasons that are pointed to, whether it's labor law, whether it's the tax rate. But the judicial system, the legal system, the slow pace of dispute resolution that you mentioned is one of the very important ones. So can you talk a bit more about how you intend to attack that problem and which industries in particular do you expect to be the biggest beneficiaries where are we going to see foreign direct investment increase there is a paradox because the people i absolutely agree uh, but there is a paradox uh, the american company who decide to invest in italy now is usually happy example number one the most important company in florence my city is not a company of art, of culture, of wine, of food. Is oil and gas GE. A oil and gas GE in Flor with headquarters in Florence, in 2009 and 2010 was the most performed around the world for GE. Mm -hmm. Because a part of made in Italy not considered in our storytelling is the quality for example of engineering of italy made in italy is not only fashion made in italy is not only ferrari or food made in italy is also the incredible quality of engineering so the people the companies who decide an investment in italy usually are absolutely happy now but there is a prejudice a, no, pre I think not uh, prejudice I think is a co correctly it's com comprehensive there is a people who worried about invest in Italy because the time of public administration of justice are longer than the rest of Europe so I cannot say now there are here a uh, different country the country is that but we reduce absolutely the time of justice in three years we reduce the numbers of days for a first step in civil court and we give the possibility for an entrepreneur an investor to have a timeline sure for investment this is the two things i can offer so if there is here some investor 
I'm ready to accept uh, every uh, purpose. Uh, how, uh, how many, um, how kind of uh, investment? I think uh, in this moment, uh, uh, Italy is finally open to investors around the world. Alitalia, it's an uh, incredible uh, history of um, success until 80, 80 years. Alitalia in the 70s, 80s was one of the most important companies around the world. Then the tragic role of politicians in Alitalia and the Italian system destroyed this uh, company. With an incredible power of unions and a lack of vision of the managers. Because I'm not against unions and uh, supporter of manager or against manager supporter unions. I think in Alitalia both realize an incredible tragedy. So now Alitalia was bought by Etihad. A few unions leaders told me, ah, it's impossible, we must absolutely maintain the Italian flag. Italian flag in the plane, it's okay. <laughs> Alitalia, Italian flag in the stadium, it's okay. But I, I'm not interested about the passport of entrepreneur. I'm interested in a project and a vision who invest in the Made in Italy in the high quality. We are the number five as a country in tourism and we lost a lot of opportunities because we are the first 25 years ago. It's impossible we have a, a plain company who fail out. So, we are open in the in, for the investors uh, in uh, uh, for Alitalia. For example, the Siderurgia, uh, come si dice? Steel. 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 Okay, l'acciaio steel. Siderurgia, come si dice? Steel. Steel. Okay. Steel. Acciaio <laughs> means steel. But Siderurgia means steel. Okay. <laughs> Let me speak about steel. <laughs> there is a very important. Uh, um, Firouge link between Genova, Piombino, Terni and above all Taranto. Four cities, little cities in Genova, no, Genova is a, a very important uh, city. Uh, four cities uh, in uh, Italy. Those cities are the capital of steel. And for few reasons different, now it's not the moment to, to explain that, they lost positions. Now, for Taranto, in uh, Ilva headquarter, there is a race between two Indian companies. In Piombino, there is an Indian company against an Algerian company. I'm ready to bring everybody, because I said in every public uh, discussion, the time of Italian close relation between politicians, managers, entrepreneurs, bankers, is finished. Italy is not only beauty, Italy is open, is open to the business, is open to the ideas, and everybody could invest in Italy with the same, exactly the same possibilities of Italian people. And for us, this uh, new change in the mind, because uh, uh, in the past, uh, the position of a we defend the Italian flag was a position uh, uh, absolutely stupid for the economy, but very strong in the public discussion. And this, my personal point of view, this is finished. Two brief questions. So you talked a lot about the political system, two times as many members of parliament as we have in the US, and the goal to streamline that so you can streamline decision making and not have the bottleneck we have here and you have in Italy. How far along are you and when, when do you, what's the next step in that process? Real briefly and then we're going to want to open it up to our members. Um, next step will be the second lecture of the process of constitutional reforms approved for the first time in uh, last August in the Senate to surpass the actual Senate and reduce the pr procedure of legislation. So the next will be in September when uh, Chambers of Deputy began the, the, the study about it, and uh, in uh, less than one year, all uh, will be concluded. 
I decided to give a message to Italian um, people uh, and I call step by step, passo dopo passo, this process. I offer the vision, the final vision. We arrive in this point. The civil justice, constitutional reform, the, with the concrete points of uh, goal, concrete uh, uh, results. And step by step, we show in the website the results. Because the risk in Italy is the lack of implementation. So, uh, give the very strong determination to arrive in every result. This is the uh, new. Uh, for the constitutional uh, reform uh, with the reduction of number of parliaments, uh, of a member of parliament, uh, and uh, we, with uh, a new elect electoral law, because this is important, uh, um, you know, in the United States, uh, you wait for the election, and uh, in the night, in the electoral, in the um, electoral night, you have the winner more or less, only 2,000 maybe, whereas, uh, you smile for 2,000. For us, every day is 2,000. <laughs> no, it's, it's correct, eh? It's a, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you are sick and you love Italian politics, you watch the TV after the elections, and everybody said, I winner. <laughs> I'm not winner, but I arrived first. I arrived first, uh, but uh, I'm happy for the result. Nobody loves in Italy. It's a very good uh, strategy for a uh, human being, but for a political institution, this is impossible. So Your trip to Stanford University, to Silicon Valley, and the lessons from there, and obviously Italy. When we all think of Italy, an extraordinary culture of art, of fashion, of design. What message, what's the most important message that you took um, from your trip there other than it's okay to fail. Move beyond the okay to fail to what else can you bring back that will help drive growth because the technology innovation is such a proud source of growth for us here. I was very surprised when Steve Jobs uh, spoke about David of Michelangelo as a model because uh, my personal point of view 10 years ago uh, was surprised why a genius of innovation spoke about the past. But I think there is a link between uh, the ability of uh, ICT revolution and in general for innovation of uh, Silicon Valley, but in the United States in general, not only in Silicon Valley, and the ideals of the culture of the past uh, in my country. Uh, let me be a mayor of Florence, uh, just uh, only here. Uh, Florence uh, was uh, an incredible place for revolution because the people invest in education, not because the people uh, uh, was uh, able uh, to, 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 to make a masterpiece. Masterpiece come from a qu high quality of education. The first man who understand the importance of education in Florence, Cosimo il Grande, created a climate, now we can say a business context, on the cultural context, who permitted to everybody become a genius. Everybody, no. Became a few people. In the same time, in the time of Renaissance, few people lived in this city only because they was educated to change. This is the reason for the success of the United States in a few areas, in a lot of areas. The relation between a great education and the ability to invest in the future. This is the reason for the which a people change. So, I have a lot of things uh, to do after uh, this trip. For example, change the, 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 the mentality of cultural supervisors in Italy. In Italy there is an idea of culture for quality. So in other ways, I think Italy is not a product to, 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 to present of the investors. Italy is a 
wonderful masterpiece uh, surrounded by problems, surrounded by red tape of bureaucracy, surrounded by uh, inability to leadership for a political uh, 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 management, because this is a problem. And uh, I decided that I obtain an incredible consensus, very amazing also for me, I'm surprised in the night of elections. Uh, Richard Gardner, former U.S. Ambassador to Italy, thank you for your wonderful statement. Does Italy have a foreign policy? This is the Council on Foreign Relations. What are your priorities in foreign affairs? Now, Libya. My priority is Libya. So, uh, Mr. Ambassador, I'm sorry if I am very um, frank. We have a lot of priorities in this moment. This is a period incredible. I was a kid when uh, uh, the um, very important uh, um, editors uh, spoke about the hand of history, the brief century, you remember. And now all is changed. This is not the end of history, it's, uh, and this is the end of geography. All countries change. You think about what is uh, the situation between Russia and Ukraine between Syria and Iraqi, between uh, Middle, uh, uh, Middle East. We have a lot of problems and uh, I think we lack a vi common vision by European politics. We must absolutely invest in a new uh, foreign political uh, strategy for Europe. But for me, for Italy, the priority is in this moment Libya. Because, not for a problem of energy, because uh, when I spoke about the, the, the political, uh, foreign political strategy, few people said, ah, Italy is uh, worried for the energy. No. Italy, in the last months, decided a strategy for energy, with, uh, above all, with Africa, Mozambique, Congo, Angola, Djibouti, few things realized and in the next 40 years we are 40 45 years independence and this is a very important new you remember our, your time in uh, in uh, in Italy but the, the the real challenge for me in Libya is the terrorism is the presence um, very dangerous man in uh, a country without control and if you permit me I think also Libya is different uh, than other parts uh, of the world this is the first year in the Balkanian area after 1914 the first year without war in Balkanian area because in this case the decision of an international community to make an intervention very strong in Balkanian area product, produced results. Now the world is different in Balkanian area. In Libya not. In Libya the decision of intervention don't cha change the regime, obviously. Uh, make the, the hand for a terrible dictator. But now Libya is without uh, govern, a clear governance. And this is a problem for Italy and for Europe. Obviously, we can speak about uh, Iraqi, Syria, the relation with Russia and, and the Ukraine. The problem of international community, I read in the last uh, number of um, uh, foreign relation, uh, um, a very interesting discussion about the vetocracy, the risk, the problem uh, of uh, uh, vetocracy around the world, so uh, it's it's very it's very interesting and uh, full of. Um, it's very important also the the, the speech of uh, President Obama today in the uh, General Assembly with a lot of considerations, very interested. But if you ask me, what is the priority for you in this moment, Olivia, and Europe, Women because the, the lack of Europe is a problem. Women in the third, fifth row there. 
Yes, Nina Gardner, Strategy International and uh, a member of the Women for Expo, Expo Committee. Um, a question on gender. Um, you talked about uh, Italy actually is the third uh, to last in the OECD countries of women in the labor force, um, only beaten by Mexico and Turkey. Um, I'd love to hear uh, specifically um, what you plan to do about getting more women in the labor force, because these are the women who are actually more educated coming out of universities, and what you can do about more um, women's entrepreneurship, because I think there's a lot of talent of women entrepreneurs if you get through the red tape and let them start their own businesses. I try to give the good example in political system and also in um, uh, economic system. The good example means for the first time in history of Italy, the half of members of government are women. And uh, it's very important that to get the, the first uh, woman to the France, the first woman, not the first, not the second, uh, not the third, in the um, foreign political uh, affairs. Uh, um, the most important uh, reforms today uh, are in the hands of women in my government. Constitutional reform, public administration reform, uh, education reform. Uh, this is very important as a message. Uh, this message comes from my party, but also from my personal experience. The same things was for me the, the way and the, 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 the strategy when I was mayor and uh, mayor of Florence, half presence of women. Now in the new uh, team of uh, my party, because called Segreteria is the board of the party after the polemics of men it's impossible Matteo every day half woman half women half women half women I decided to stop with the half women and I decided to indicate seven men and eight women to give the <laughs> message to my dear friends of the Democrat Party obviously this is only a message important but only a message the second message is in the um, companies, in the public, public companies, not correct, in the um, companies uh, owned by the state, by government. Uh, the new president of ENI is a woman, uh, the new president of Enel is a woman, the new president uh, of um, um, Poste Italiane is a woman. Uh, <laughs> I spoke with the former uh, chief of police in Italy and president of Meccanica and he told me, no, I stay here, I don't want to Casablanca, please, I, I am a man and I, I decided to remain a man. Uh, but the, the, the message of change is uh, uh, very, and also in my team, also in my team, uh, I, I have a lot of, uh, uh, women work uh, with me. Obviously, the message for me is not uh, sufficient, but we need uh, a mentality change. For the Italian politics, the message is very clear. After 20 years of polemics about the role of women in politics, and not only in politics, the message of there is a new generation of leaders with half women, it's absolutely powerful as uh, uh, message but uh, I think we must change mentality and starting from the education for the little children if in Italy when you spoke about Italy remember there are two Italys unfortunately in the in the um, performances the performance of North Italy usually is absolutely better than South Italy the performance of economy in Italy, in North Italy, is uh, more or less the same of Germany. The problem is the performance in the South Italy, and this is the place in which I will win the match. Uh, the lack of a system of education for the women in the South is unacceptable. Uh, just one date because I speaking only about emotion and the discussion. I two dates. Uh, Italy is committed to arrive in 2020 uh, 
33% in the, uh, come si dice asili nido, uh, kindergarten, kindergarten for, uh, for uh, um, around, the, around the country. Now the um, principal cities are more than 50% or less than 50%, a good result. In the south, the average is 8, 9, 12, 13%. This is a problem. Starting from <coughs> kindergarten, continue with the same salary, the same retribution. For example, uh, justice system. Now uh, we know in Italy to become a uh, judge with a concourse, with a public race. The half of winner are women now, more the half. But in the uh, first uh, uh, line of government, in the first uh, um, uh, manage, in the first line of management, the number of uh, women are not the, 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 the half, one on six. So there is not simply a message uh, as the message of ministers woman, women, but also the concrete strategy in the kindergarten, in the salary, in the place of responsibility, in the education, in the respect, I'm really confident because uh, Italy is, uh, the role of women in Italy will be a part of our asset for the future. We have time for one more question. Uh, we'll do gentlemen right at the front. Okay. Wait, if you can wait for it. And if you can ask your question in English, please. Yes, uh, Pasquino, uh, New York University Politics Department. Uh, to achieve this, uh, important necessary transformation of Italy, it seems to me you need vision and good ideas, you have them. You need specialists and competent people helping you, there are a lot of them in Italy, from the Minister of Economy to people who have been helping <laughs> in <coughs> designing the new electoral reform. But you need also majority in the parliament. <laughs> and that's the weak. <laughs> The smile is dangerous, huh? <laughs> Your smile is dangerous. Yeah, well, well, do you think we can hope that the parliament will follow your good ideas and your intelligence specialists? I hope so. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much because you uh, said the things very interesting, but very quickly. I'm sure about the capacity of this parliament to understand I'm not the cause of change in Italy. I'm the effect of change in Italy. In other words, my personal point of view is that Italy needs a revolution, not an evolution, because this is the moment. Arrive in the life of countries a moment in which is absolutely important change. Arrive the wave. In this moment, after the result of European elections of 41%, after the message very strong arrived from the citizens to members of parliament, I'm absolutely sure the members of parliament are committed to realize those reforms. Obviously, every day in the Italian newspaper, I read, there is a problem, there is a problem, yes. It's normal there is a problem. In Silicon Valley, uh, two days ago, a teacher explained us, a professor explained us, okay, I received 1,800 1, ideas. I choose a few ideas, and now the result good are for 19 projects. 1,800 ideas, 19 projects. What is the problem in Italy? In Italy, the storytelling of media, and not only media, is very clear. The people spoke only about the cases of not success. If there is 19 good performance, the people spoke about 1,781 ideas fail. I understand your smile, but you understand my cry. <laughs> because, because I must absolutely change also the ability to storytelling. 
When I spoke about storytelling in Italian, the translation of storytelling is raccontare storie. It's not difficult, huh? <laughs> if a politician racconta una storia, it's not a good politician. It's a man who lost time. Racconta una storia means a man who lost time, invent uh, time. It's not the man who changed country. It's a man who lost time. So the storytelling in the United States, uh, an incredible ability to give a horizon, to give an opportunity, to give a strategy, to give a dream. In Italy, racconta una storia means a nightmare. In USA, storytelling is a dream. So for this reason, I think, yes, we have a lot of problems with the parliament, uh, with the consulate, with the advisors, with everything. But our first problem is change the mind. And this, uh, let me be very frank, is the same thing for every part of Italy. Uh -huh. I'm committed to change, but I necessity, but the first necessity is change the storytelling and give this opportunity and the hope. And on that note, we unfortunately are out of time.